All right, guys, so I am here with a end of the year basic review for our San Francisco 49ers. Now, crappy part about this is we ended 4 and 12. We did not make the playoffs. We lost Jimmy G early in the season. You know, he was only 1 and 2 when we lost him. Uh went down towards ACL. We lost Jet McKinnon, he tore his ACL. Uh, Brita couldn't finish out the season because he wound up getting injured. He's probably playing injured all year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one of the bright spots on the defense was Uncle Sherm and, of course, DeForest Buckner. Uh, but other than that, let, let's get into a few things. So, once again, 4-12, and not the season we were looking for. Last year, we finished 6-10, and so we regressed, re- re- regressed in year two which is definitely not a good thing for Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch in their tenure. They have six years to turn us around. So in year three, year three is usually a point where we need to get things rolling in the right direction. Um, I still am not a big fan of Salah's defense, not by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, But honestly, we have the number two pick. We are banking on the Cardinals deciding to choose hopefully an offensive lineman because that's what they need. Um, so we'll just, you know, pray to God they don't choose Nick Bosa and we can get him. That'll go ahead and give us, you know, some some good rush off the edge. And hopefully in the offseason, you know, in free agency, we can take a look around and actually be active again. Uh, these first two years of free agency have been very Trent balky esque in the fact that we just have been active. I mean, our biggest signing in our free agency has been Richard Sherman. Um, He has definitely panned out very well for us, so I can say that much. Um, So we are looking forward to the offseason and, you know, making a few additions. Uh, One thing we are going to have to work on, though, honestly, is our defensive backfield. We have two interceptions on the year. Two. Anton Exum, Chikwaski Tart. And Tart might not even be back next year. So that's pretty pathetic for our secondary. We we need interceptions. We need picks. You know, we need picks. We need pick six. We need everything. So uh, unfortunately, we've had a pretty crappy year as a defensive backfield. A lot lot of yards, you know, stuff like that. So biggest issue that we're going to face um, coming up this year is getting the offense back in rhythm with Jimmy G at the helm, you know, and making sure that things start to flow properly. Because at least if we had this year to see what he looked like for a full year in the system, it probably would have been a little bit easier and been a little bit better um, in regards to, you know, us keeping things going and keeping everything in the right direction. Sorry. Camera bounced around a little bit. My AC came on. It's a little loud. So, with that being said, let's get into some quick stats. So, first thing is, Jimmy G came in, 1-3 as a starter, 5 TDs, 3 interceptions, 718 yards. And, I mean, in three games, 718 yards is pretty ridiculous. That means he was slinging the ball around fairly well. Um, the bad thing is he took 13 sacks. Um then we jump over to C.J. Beathard after um, Jimmy G gets injured. And C.J. comes in from week four to eight. He goes 0-5 as a starter. He takes 18 sacks. Uh, eight touchdowns, seven interceptions, 1,252 yards. So, you know, wasn't much better. Put us on a losing streak. Didn't help anything much. So it's unfortunate. And... It's just what it is. Unfortunately, CJ has one win on his record and nothing else. And as I've said previously, and people kind of ridicule me about this, some people have even said things in the comments. It's very simple. CJ Beathard has Tony Romo syndrome. And the reason I say it's Tony Romo syndrome is because Romo was one of those quarterbacks. He would throw an interception at the most inopportune moment. And that's what I mean. I'm not talking about his winning. I'm not talking about his throwing, his none of that. I'm just saying he throws an interception. He makes a mistake, period, at the wrong time. And that's, you you just can't do that. This is football. You just can't. So, next up, we bring in Nick Mullins. He comes off that stellar start against the Raiders. 
Everybody looks at him. Brett Favre calls him and congratulates him because he went to Southern Miss, just like Brett Favre did. All these other things happen. So Nick Mullins comes in from week nine all the way through week 17. We stick with him. We don't go back to CJ at all. Nick Mullins was sacked 17 times. He was three and five as the starter. And, you know, 13 TDs, 10 interceptions. Several of those interceptions weren't really his fault. And I can say that just because I saw the plays and I watched most of the, you know, most of the season. And when I see the interceptions, a lot of them are tip drills or somebody not catching the ball properly. So that's another thing. He had 2,277 yards. Um, you know, he was sacked 17 times. So, I mean, week nine all the way through 17, you're sacked 17 times. Week four through eight, uh, C.J. Beathard was sacked 18 times. So, to me, I look at it like to me, I look at it like this. I can say it very simply. The issue that we face is going to be who's going to be the backup. I say we go ahead and stick with Nick Mullins. A lot of people are saying, well, he's got high value now. We can trade him for a draft pick, blah, blah, blah. But what are the chances of that draft pick actually working out? It's very, very minimal chances that you trade him for a draft pick that's going to actually work out, that's going to do something. And to be honest with you, you're going to have to look for a team that's desperate to, for us to get a third rounder, a second or a first, because most teams are going to probably offer a fourth and lower just strictly because they don't have enough tape on him. I mean, don't get me wrong. Six games is definitely, you know, enough film. You know, I mean, look at what they did with Matt Flynn in, in Seattle. They took him, paid him all that money. And Russell Wilson came and beat him out of his job. And didn't even take long. So, you know, for Nick Mullins, I say I would like to keep him. We can put CJ on the practice squad. I'm pretty sure he'll be fine. He'll most likely clear waivers. You know, that, you know, will go ahead and do certain things. Um, you know, as far as quarterbacks are concerned, you know, there's definitely a few teams around the league that can use a guy or at least use a good backup. Um, Nick definitely has proven himself. And one thing that I said about him during the preseason is very simple. He processes things faster. He sees the field in a broader spectrum than CJ does. So period point blank coming up this season, we need to focus on making sure we get us some pass rushers. We need a new DB DB coach. I mean, to be honest with you, we've got five, African-American head coaches that just got fired. Todd Bowles, Steve Wilkes, Vance Joseph, Marvin Lewis, and Hugh Jackson. Now, out of all of those coaches, Todd Bowles, Steve Wilkes, and Vance Joseph, all three of them were DB's coaches. And when they were DB's coaches, what did they do? Those DB's succeeded, and those DB's flew high. So, honestly, I would definitely love to have, you know, Todd Bowles as the DB's coach, even Vance Joseph, maybe even Steve Wilkes, you know, but I have to say it's 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 just a you know a situation where we got to find a new DB head, DB defensive backs coach because we're not taking out advantage of these opportunities here. Now on the defensive side of the ball, um, one guy that doesn't get a lot of recognition who got a Pro Bowl snub, which still is confusing to me, would have been DeForest Buckner. Twelve sacks this year. Uh, had great time with the quarter, you know, great time pressuring quarterback. Defoe did it all on his own. Next deadline, you know, as far as sacks go, we have Cassius Marsh uh, and Ronald Blair tied with five and a half. Nobody else had more than that. So on the defensive side of the ball, you know, like I said, we just need another pass rush. We need to get our DBs sheared up so we can start getting interceptions and we can start knocking down more passes and not allowing so many passing yards per game. Um, like I said, two interceptions between Axum and Tart, that's just pathetic for a defense. Um, now, on the offensive side of the ball, Matt Breida averaged 5.32 yards a carry. You know, um, he himself was a full-on beast. He only had three TDs, but he had 814 yards. So, I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all got to respect that man. You know, he stays as the backup, if anything. Honestly, I would love for us to do what I did in Madden uh, 19. We can go ahead and, honestly, I'm not going to lie, and it's nothing against him. But I say trade Jet McKinnon and sign Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell and Matt Breida? Breida comes in to spell him so you don't lose a step? Are you serious? That's a better backfield to me than, you know, 
uh, Jet and, and, and Brita, you know. So you got Jet and Cheetah, but I think it would be better with Le'Veon Bell and Matt Brita. That's just me. Um, you know, on the receiving side of the ball, we had, you know, Kendrick Bourne had four touchdowns. He had 487 yards. You have uh, Dante Pettis, 467 yards, five touchdowns. Marquise Goodwin, 395 yards, four TDs. So we only had about four receivers go over 400 yards in general. That's not good at all. But the biggest and the brightest spot on the offense has been George motherfucking Stone Cold Kittle, baby. If y'all didn't watch George Kittle this season, and if y'all ain't have him in fantasy, if y'all didn't pay attention and respect that man, something wrong with you. George Kittle, best tight end in football, period. It's either him or Travis Kelsey. Gronk is out of the, out of the question. I'm sorry. For all you Gronk fans, for all you Patriot fans, I don't care how you feel about this. And I don't care if you get upset or you cry about it. It's not about what you've done in the past. The NFL is a what have you done for me lately league. So very simply put, George Kittle is the best tight end in the league. Name another one better and show me. He just set the single season record for most receiving yards by a tight end in league history, in 49ers history. This guy had 1,377 yards and five TDs. He can block and he can catch. Do you understand how hard it is to find a hybrid tight end? Usually tight ends are one or the other. You either block well or you catch well. Most tight ends don't do both. The average tight end is going to struggle with one or the other. George Kittle does both and he does both very well. So you got to respect that man. I'm sorry. He's just that great. Um, you know, so one thing I can say is, is that Pierre Garçon, bye-bye. It's time to go. Malcolm Smith, Chuck the Deuces. Like these, these are guys that are expendable. We don't need them. You know what I'm saying? We don't need Malcolm Smith. He's not doing anything. He was injured the first year. He kept getting injured off and on this year. He played okay. He wasn't great. You know, Another bright spot on the defense? Hmm, let's think. Very simple, Fred Warner. This guy's a tackling fucking machine. He tackles any and everything moving. He always all over the field. You know what I'm saying? He'll bat down a pass. He'll do whatever he needs to do. Uh, Fred Warner has been a very, very beautiful bright spot. You know, when Reuben Foster decided to be a dumbass again, I feel like Reuben Foster was like the second coming of Alden Smith with his stupidity and not knowing how to do anything right. I mean, it's very simple. Alden Smith couldn't stay away from the bottle of alcohol. So now look at him. He's out of the league. No one knows what he's doing. We're hoping and praying for that guy that he's getting some help and he's getting himself back in, you know, back in shape because he was almost, he was touted the next Lawrence Taylor, which is hard as a mug to, to get praise like that. You don't get called the next Lawrence Taylor just because you're just an okay guy. That's a very high praise. Uh, it's just like Josh Gordon, unfortunately, this season. He's been that guy that, that's been, you know, struggling and look at him. Now he out of the league again. He, I think he didn't fail the drug test. I don't know. But it, that dude needs to just let football go. He can't keep his mind right. It's unfortunate. And hopefully he gets help as well. Ruben Foster, you need to figure out how not to put your hands on people, whether it be male or female. Obviously, in this situation, it's a woman again. But you know you were messing with that broad, and she told you she was going to end your career, and here you go again running after her. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's... I did this my video so I can say what I want. I mean, it must be that damn good. You know what I'm saying? You know, the, the, you know those situations, you know, and, and behind closed doors must be amazing for you to keep running back. I don't know. Maybe it's puppy love, something. He's still young. He's still a young kid. Either way, all in all, unfortunately, we ended the season 4-12. and We didn't get where we wanted to get. We do have the second pick in the draft. Let's draft Nick Bosa. And then after that, we need to make sure we sure up that offensive line. Because to be honest with you, all those sacks are not going to cut it. You know, you had Nick taking 17. Uh, CJ took 18. And Jimmy, he had already taken 13 through three games. So that says our offensive line, we need to get our shit together We're back big time. Um, I can respect everybody on the line. Uh, Mike McGlinchey has been a bright spot. He's been beautiful. But we still need to make sure we do everything that we can to get right. Um, I do see that Joe Staley is there. Hopefully he stays and he comes back for another year and we need to draft somebody to eventually take his place because he is getting up there in age, uh, but he's still playing at a Pro Bowl level. Gotta love the guy. He's funny. He's hilarious. To all my 49er fans, I love you. We'll see you next year. Let's focus on the offseason. Let's focus on this draft. And please, John Lynch, go out and get us some damn help in free agency, not just the draft. Peace. Be easy. Stay blessed. 
49ers forever. That's right.